First Kings chapter 8 from verse 22 to 30. Solomon concludes the temple dedication ceremony by a prayer of faith, a prayer of confidence, and a prayer of humility. Friends, even at the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem, when Israel entered upon its golden age, Solomon faced political opposition from many. Practically, some people resented the costs and forced labor required to build this ambitious edifice. Spiritually, some saw the temple as a presumptuous attempt to contain the God who is King of heaven and earth. Before all of these supporters and detractors in Israel, and before the Lord, Solomon prayed three times. First, he gave thanks for God's many mercies. Israel had escaped slavery in Egypt, had endured years of hardship and nomadic wandering in the deserts of the Middle East, and finally had entered a land flowing with milk and honey. Here the Israelites were empowered by God to drive out the existing powers, establish their cities, create their government, and under David and Solomon, develop a nation recognized beyond its borders. The final part of the Lord's promise could not come to fruition as God entered the temple where he promised his name would dwell. Second, Solomon acknowledged that this temple could not contain Almighty God. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 27 As glorious as the temple was, and as bright as this moment shone in Israel's history, it was nothing compared to the Lord. Despite what they had attained, they would always be in need of God's guidance and when they disobeyed His mercy. The conclusion of Solomon's prayer was marked not by triumph, but by a petition that they be heard and forgiven. 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 30. Solomon pinned the third, most climactic part of his prayer on the promise God made to his father David. He prayed that God would dwell in the temple. Of course, we know that God doesn't need temples and churches to live in. But who among us has not felt God's presence in a particular way inside a church? Like the temple of old, these buildings are special dwelling places, sanctuaries of prayer for all God's children. They also serve as a reminder that God wants to establish a sanctuary of his presence within the heart of each one of us. Let us then invite him in. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, fan into flame our desire for prayer. Give us opportunities to be at church, surrounded by your presence and by reminders of all that Jesus has done for us. Like Solomon, we ask you to dwell within us. Amen. Thank you so much, my dear friend, for listening. Please do remember to subscribe. God bless you.